So today I wanted to make a video on a few unorthodox filming techniques or editing techniques that I utilize pretty heavily. So these three techniques are pretty easily replicated and can be used in a wide variety of situations. And I use them pretty much every project. I just finished up a project with Dr. Martens and I used all three of them in this project. So I'll go ahead and kind of go over a few different scenes within that project in particular. Sometimes when you're on set and you have a shot list or you're working with a producer or a director or even let's say you're the director yourself and you have a specific look you're going for and you get to a location on these running gun situations and you can't sort of direct the light or something just doesn't look right or you know you just can't get certain shots. Oftentimes you need a lot of extra shots, a lot of b-roll shots that kind of fill in your production. Shooting these kind of shots are a great insurance policy, let's put it like that, when you're working with um, kind of big scale or even small scale clients that are expecting um, certain lengths on projects and you know that they're not going to you're just not gonna have enough shots. And so it's always great to, to take these kinds of shots as sort of fillers to, you, you'll get it. So the first kind of stylized shot that I always shoot on location is these kind of slow shutter speed shots. You don't change your FPS or your, your frames per second. You just literally show down, slow down. You just literally slow down your shutter speed to typically what I do is like one tenth, one fifteenth of a second. Change, keep everything else. The only thing that you need to do when you slow down your shutter speed is actually close down your aperture as well. And so essentially, if you had yours at like what f eight, you just go up a few stops to compensate um, or however many stops you need, just based on your monitor or your, your camera. And once you've compensated with your settings to in order to decrease the shutter speed, then that's where the fun comes in. A couple of different techniques that I like to do. Um, the first one is that it's you're not gonna be able to shoot the same sort of shots that you typically shoot with your normal settings with these slow shutter speed stylistic shots. I feel like there's only two real kind of scenarios that I often find myself using them in. The first is having the subject stationary and you as the cameraman or the DP rotating around the subject in various different maneuvers. One thing that I like to do is I like to start with the person kind of stationary and I rotate around them and then behind objects sort of to create a sense of motion. The other thing that you can do is if you have a zoom lens, you can manually zoom in and zoom out really quickly into your subject and that creates a sort of cool motion blur effect that you can cut right at the uh, zoom section so that it flows nicely with your production. The other thing that you can do is you can have your camera mounted on tripod or just stationary and then roll it and then all the moving subjects, essentially the environment will stay obviously stationary and clear, but all the subjects will be blurred out. And you can then speed this up. I mean, this is how time lapses are created, but you can do this uh, really quickly and have a couple cool like cut shots that you include in your project. This one right here in particular, we just had, I just grabbed the camera, put it up against like a pole at the Shibuya Scramble um, and just rolled it for, I don't know, like 15, 20, 30 seconds and then sped it up in post and stabilized it. And this is what I got. These ones here, I'm just rotating around the subject a few different times and then I'll just cut the one where the subject is most clear in the middle um, and I'll use those in, in these situations here. Another great one is actually panning with moving cars, moving bikes, objects and stuff like that. It's uh, pretty pretty common in photography, but in videography you can do the same sort of thing where you kind of just stay the same distance away from your subject as they're panning and you just try and keep your camera as steadily locked on them as possible as you're panning and it'll create a cool like blur effect and keep them in focus. And it's a really cool uh, effect to just to create, it's a great way to like introduce movement and energy that Sometimes when your light your lighting's terrible or the location's not as like interesting, then it's a good one to have up your sleeve. Second technique, it's not really a technique, it's having one of these. Now this was recommended to me by my friend Mike. This is a, an old digital camera and it's called a Sony Cybershot. This is a DSC TX1. I used to use a Sony Handycam, just like an old one that you could find on eBay, I think for like 20, 30 bucks. This one I found out here in Japan. This one's also like 20 bucks. I think they're a little bit more expensive now on eBay. Integrating old VGA style video content into your higher end productions isn't a groundbreaking thing. A lot of people do it already. I think it's a great way to introduce uh, creative B-roll shots and kind of change up the feeling of the film. Don't overdo it, obviously, but I think it's a great way to have various mediums. 
I think it's always fun. The best thing about this camera in particular is this form factor, the size. When you're in running gun productions with just yourself or an assistant or like a small crew of three or four people, and you just have a lot of bulky cameras all the time, sometimes you miss these small quick moments that you'd like to shoot with. A lot of times I'll have my buddies, um, maybe have like a second shooter on set with me. Uh, in this Dr. Martin shoot, Alex is shooting a lot of B-roll on, I asked him to shoot on this primarily. So he just focused on getting a lot of different cuts with this so Sony Cybershot. It's 10.2 megapixels. The quality I feel is high enough that you can use it on, on social media content. I mean, I don't shoot like premier length documentaries or or stuff that goes on Netflix. So I don't know how the quality holds up with regards to that. But one of the cool things I like to do with this is I like to layer shots on top of each other. So I'll have a background kind of environmental shot and then the actual movement with a smaller cutout section on the actual video. I feel it gives a little bit more of like a stylistic depth to the actual image and it makes it a little bit more interesting. And the coolest thing about these cameras and what the reason why I like these cameras in particular more than a lot of people shoot on these like big, uh, I don't know what they're called, cassette tape cameras. Oh, I think I lost my SD, where is my SD card for this? So the cool thing about these cameras is that they use these old like PSP style SD cards that you can adapt micro SD cards into. Um, and then you can take that micro SD card out and then put it in to a regular SD card reader so you can read it. It's all SD card based. And so that's really nice. You don't have to like play back cassette tapes and like re-download it. It's just, it's a pain in the ass sometimes. Having an SD card makes it really easy to quickly toss it into a project cut it up, chop it up um, for social media, for stories, for blah, blah, blah. It's portability and ease of use are really amazing. You can mount this on your car. You can do a lot of cool stuff with this. And a lot of times, another technique that I'll do with this camera in particular, a lot of times the cool thing that I like to do is have this set on a subject and then quickly move away or pan away. When you pan away and then cut, that creates like a great uh, sort of like a motion blur cut sequence that you can chop to the beat of like a music or the score. And it's really good for transitions. I, I, I do it all the time. And the final thing that I did pretty often in this Dr. Martin's project in particular, but I do a lot in various, pro almost all the projects, is I like to reverse clips. Now, reversing the clip isn't difficult, but when you shoot the clip, it's fun to think about the reverse when you're shooting it so that you can plan for it in post. So in this specific example, this is kind of like an intro sequence to Kazuho, which is a designer here in Tokyo. I shot this clip initially panning with the taxi up to sort of like a, a bust up shot of just him. And then I knew that in the in the edit, I wanted to reverse it. So I would start with him and then it would pan down into the taxi and then the left to right movement I could cut with. Coincidentally, the next shot was actually a slow sh shutter shot. So that's an instance of where sometimes when you're shooting movement um, instead of like just randomly shooting movement you introduce variation so you'll sometimes you'll you'll have movement and then you'll end up on the subject or you'll have the subject and then you'll pan to a movement or you just have like the movement itself if you think about like okay if i reverse this in post how can i match it with other clips later it's just like a really fun thing to do and a lot of times for transitions transitions feel more natural when there's a specific flow to the sequence right so let's say if there's a transition where the movement is left to right the introductory clip that begins the movement should also be left to right and then the ending should finish with the left to pan into the right motion sometimes when you're shooting it just doesn't make sense uh sometimes you're shooting up down left right it's always good to have a variety of shots. So what I'm saying is shoot both directions, but also think about if I reverse this clip, would it look weird? Sometimes you have individuals walking backwards. It looks cool sometimes, but maybe it's not the correct direction. Maybe you need to place yourself on the other side of the subject so that instead of left to right, they're walking right to left, vice versa. Things start to flow. Just shoot both angles sometimes, and then you can reverse it or not reverse it, and it makes more sense in the edit. Also, another kind of like half tip to add on to that is I always kind of just shoot longer than the actual action happens. So if I want a shot where like I'm panning into the subject, I'll, if I'm gonna have like a gimbal or I'm just like handheld, I'll walk up to the subject, but I'll continue to, to roll as I walk back. So when I'm like panning backwards, sometimes your movement is smoother when you're walking backwards or you're walking forwards, depending how good your ninja walk is. 
And then in post, that gives you the option if you want to either reverse clip sometimes or just use the natural motion. Sometimes it doesn't look good. Sometimes your mind can tell that when something's reverse, it doesn't look right. Sometimes you can use that to your advantage and create some really cool effects. But it's always good to shoot more than you need, obviously. Um, both forward, backwards, left to right. Just keep rolling. And then in the edit, you'll never know what you might need. So yeah, I may post this on, I may post this actual, like it was like a four minute video that I shot for Dr. Martens here in Tokyo on 10 creative groups on my channel here, or I just maybe just link it down below once it's posted live. It's supposed to be on uh, their socials in Japan and then also maybe the global account, I don't know. But yeah, if you have any questions uh, on any of these tips or any recommendations on new cameras that I should buy for uh, old vintage style shooting, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'll check those out. And as always, appreciate you watching to the very end. Please stay tuned, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, all that jazz, and I'll see you guys soon.